I'm here, I'm queer, and it's time for a medical video. Insert snazzy intro here, cause I'm not talented enough to create one. Yeah! Hey guys, so today I wanted to talk about therapy, EMDR therapy, which is eye movement desensitization, reprocessing. Finally got that right, I always, I always mess it up. And that is the therapy for PTSD. And I want to talk about it as I had my first session two days ago as I'm filming this. So Tuesday, July 5th, 2016. I probably will be uploading this on Saturday. I'm not sure, but I'm just kind of guessing because I usually upload on Saturdays. And I had my first session. I just want to make a video talking about it for two reasons. One, because I do want to talk about PTSD, but I'm not ready to talk about specifically the trauma that have caused my PTSD in too much detail yet so this is kind of just like sti sticking my toes in to getting more comfortable talking about it in the future and also I just want to make this video as a kind of just like if anyone is for just like if people wanted to know about EMDR therapy like first-hand experience this is a personal experience it might not be the same for everyone else but this is just want to make a video about my experience, my first session, I'll probably make videos for my future sessions, maybe not all of them, but probably some of them, so, uh, yeah, so that's why I want to make this video, and I would like to say two things, one, yes, I'm going to be reading off my phone, I put down some jot notes just so I don't get off track, because I filmed this before, it was 20 minutes, don't want this one to be 20 minutes, I'm going to need to stop rambling soon, and also, I'd just like to say, any traumas I list in this video, are like are not all of the traumatic events I've gone through. Some of them I'm not comfortable mentioning at all and don't feel safe mentioning because I got some comments in the other video assuming that bullying was the only trauma I've gone through and also belittling it, which I did not appreciate very much. And one, bullying I went through was extremely serious, like really, really serious and traumatic. And two, uh, not the only trauma I've gone through. I have complex PTSD. I've gone through a, tra through tra a few traumatic events that has caused my PTSD. Just I'm not comfortable listing all of them and I don't feel safe. Okay, so now that I've said that, now let us get on to the video as I unlock my phone. So, to, so I got referred to my uh, EMDR therapist through the psychiatrist I saw who diagnosed me with PTSD. Luckily, the therapist was in the same building as him. He knew her because sometimes it's hard to find EMDR therapists apparently because they have to be specialized and trained in EMDR. So they can be hard to find, especially if you live in a small area like I do and we do have to drive like an hour out of town to to go to the appointments. But, it's, but I was lucky that I was able to find one so quickly and be referred but because my psychiatrist, because she was in the same building as my psychiatrist. So got to the appointment, my mom filled out some paperwork and because it was the first session, we created a timeline of the trauma I've gone through and I feel like this is pretty standard practice. Created a timeline, rated each, like, like she just listed things that could be traumatic if there's anything related to anything she listed. I said, just like zero to five. She was just like, okay, did you have a traumatic birth? Did you remember postpartum depression? Uh, do you remember any traumatic memories from then? Since zero to five, you don't really remember much. And she was like, was there like any loss or anything that accidents or stuff that happened that time? And it's like five to 10, again, like any losses, any accidents, uh, like, what was school like, what were your grades like, body image issues, uh, like discipline, grades, just like she just kind of listed categories, was anything I could think of that just like half in those categories, she had me rate how traumatic it was, and just went through like that, and then 11 to 16, it was just like, again, more of the same, like any accidents, any losses, grades, discipline, home life, uh, what was sex education like, did you have any premature, ex ed was there any, have you experienced any, I think she described as premature uh, experiences in sex or any sexual assault, body image, bullying, and she just listed things like that, we rated, uh, if anything was in those categories, we rated it one to 10 and just quickly moved down making a timeline. She commented how she liked that I was 16, which is, which is one of bad, which is kind of 
She was like, it's kind of a bad thing to say that I'm glad you're only 16 because you know you're 16 in therapy for trauma. But also, like, it's a lot easier to make the timelines. When I'm with, like, the 80-year-olds, it takes, like, two sessions to create a timeline. And I was just like, oh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I'm not sure if that's the best thing to say, but... <laughs> And then after that, she taught me two exercises that I would need before we started the processing. And I and basically, I'll quickly explain EMDR therapy. Basically, when P, when PTSD happens, it's because you your brain can't process a traumatic memory, and EMDR induces REM sleep so you can process the memory and it'll stop causing the distress on your brain. So. Basically, first, we, before we started the processing, she introduced me to a device called the buzzer, which it was this gray box. It had these two flat orbs on each end, and she said it can either be called a buzzer or a pulsar. She didn't know she didn't re she didn't remember the official term for it. I don't know if there is like an official technical term, but buzzer is what she's going with, what I'm going with, and it had these two flat orbs, and they pulsed, vibrated, buzzed in a certain like rhythm. Dep she was, they had different settings depending on what we, what she was doing, like what thing we were doing. But basically, they buzzed. I held I held one in each hand, and they're supposed to stimulate both sides of my brain, inducing REM sleep. And she said it could also be done with head with headphones or tapping, like on each of my legs very slowly. But I wanted to try the buzzer because I felt like that worked best for me and it did. And first off, we did two exercises necessary for processing, one called container and one called safe place. Container is I had the buzzers, she turned them on and they were buzzing very slowly and she had me imagine, she had me imagine a container and I imagined this box I have that looks like a book, it's disguised as a book. I think it's from the dollar store. And she told me to imagine taking all the memories, the sensations, just the feelings of the trauma and taking them, putting them in the container, closing it and putting it somewhere. And I imagined my bookshelf. So taking the container, putting it on the bookshelf. And she said, she did say, cause she had like the script to read that, and she, cause she just had like this, paper that she was reading and she's we we're doing this like she mentioned that this is not this is not like to seal it away or bottle it up this is to contain it and I can open the box when I want to I'm allowed to look back on the trauma if I want to but this is to contain it so that so that if it comes flying out when I don't want it to and upsets me I can take it put it back in the container and put it away so it doesn't upset me and then we did the safe place exercise, which we had, which we practiced a bit. I think it was mostly because I struggled in getting it, <laughs> that we practiced it quite a bit. But basically I was to imagine a place I felt safe. I imagined my room, because my room is a really comfy, safe place for me. So just imagine like, since, like, uh, think it now, focus in on any sensations, like any sounds, anything I notice, focus on those, and a lot about like focusing on details, if I notice a certain detail, show me to focus on that and enjoy that detail, and just really visualize the place, and then come up with a word to go with the place to call it up, and I thought of home, because this is my home, and, and then we practiced, I had to imagine something mildly irritating. I struggled with the mild part, apparently everything I imagined was highly or moderately irritating. So then we went with imagine pencil snapping while I was drawing, like the lead breaking, and then imagine, like feel the mild irritation, and then think of the word home, and bring myself to the safe place, and then talk about how it made me feel, and we did it a few times until I was able to successfully bring myself to the safe place using the word home and it made me feel calmer and like more secure and safe and then after we did that we went on to processing which I didn't I had the choice of doing in my first session or not because we could have just done a relaxation exercise and ended it but I thought I would try processing I wasn't quite sure because I didn't I was scared I'd be really really upset for like days because of it but I wanted to try because 
so what we did was we she first we she had a piece of paper that we filled out and it was just I had to think of a memory I wanted to process. I thought one that was fairly fairly traumatic because she suggested like a heavier memory is one to better to start processing with. So we started. So she she had me list how severe the trauma was, and like I read it like a six. She had me list how distressing the memory of the trauma is, how distressing the trauma is to me, and I rated it at about an eight. And then we, and then she had me, she gave me a piece of paper with these different phrases on them, and she had me pick a phrase that kind of fit how the trauma made me feel, and I had chosen the phrase, I am not in control, and she told me to, f and she turned on the the buzzers and they were buzzing quite quickly this time because before they were slower and she had me and she had me focus on the phrase I am not in control to bring up the memory of the trauma and then show me to focus on whatever comes up and so I would so for if we did this in 30 second intervals then I was I had my eyes closed I was seeing and reliving the trauma I w went through this traumatic memory and after about 30 seconds she'd stop it and ask me like how does this like how like how are you feeling and kind of like gave me an opening to also to like say what i was seeing and like what i was feeling like sensation wise but i didn't have to i could just say like the emotion and i was just like saying stuff like i feel scared i feel not in control uh i feel trapped and she'd be like go with that uh turn back on the device for another 30 seconds i just keep on i'd go but i would be seeing it again and it'd be and i'd be following just through it through the traumatic memory and she'd stop it ask how i'm feeling and i'd say and then she said go with that and we did that for about five minutes it felt really much longer to me and then as it was kind of wearing me down and like I was, I was losing my ability to like say how I was feeling, and I was kind of shaking, and I was just tense. Like my hands were like this, holding the buzzers near my head, because that's what I do when I, because that's what I do sometimes when I'm like really, really unstable. I'll go like this, hold my head, like pull up my hair. So I was starting to do that, and I was like, I can't continue. Can we just? I don't think I can continue any farther. So she's like, okay. And then we did the container exercise. So I put the traumatic memories away back in the container. And then she asked me how distressing the memory I was now. And I kind of focused a bit. I try not too much because I didn't want the container to just fly open again. But I felt that the trauma, I felt like immediately that the trauma was less kind of upsetting when I thought about it. So it went, so then it was like a six or a seven. Cause like I immediately noticed a change and how much the trauma distressed me, how much the memory distressed me. Like I immediately noticed a change like that. Like right after you do the processing, you notice a change immediately in how the and how much the memory distresses you. And she wrote that down and then we did a relaxation exercise. I think it was called like the blue I think it was called like the soothing light or the healing light. And after that like we talked a bit and she was like okay so we only did it for five minutes and it already helped and I said yeah it did and I really did feel like it helped like I did find the memory was a lot less distressing like the processing I admit was it was scary like I was reliving one of the worst moments of my entire life in pretty vivid detail and that is kind of distressing kind of scary like I was scared to go to EMDR therapy for a while because of that but I glad that my mom convinced me to go and got me to go because I it did help it helped that memory was a pretty severe one pretty distressing one and in the processing even just in five minutes it created a bit of a change in how much it distressed me and the last two days I've had pretty good mental health days maybe it was because of the EMDR therapy maybe it wasn't I'm kind of leaning towards it pretty obviously was correlated and probably was.
and I haven't had any need to use the container exercise yet. She told me, she like, she said that I'm encouraged to use it and that's kind of my homework to use that and use safe place when I am distressed and I've yet to need to use it. Probably will between the, the now and the next session and, and, and yeah, so I found it did help quite a bit immediately and I'm less scared to go back to future sessions now like but I, like yeah I'm less scared to go to future sessions now because like, it is scary as all hell but it helps it's helping me and I want to get better and also another thing to note it is exhausting it was really exhausting though like when they say therapies an emotional marathon aren't aren't over exaggerating in this case or I don't think they ever over exaggerate but especially in this case not over an exaggeration I was so exhausted like she was I was literally instructed go home watch Netflix lay down like you are going to be so tired and I did like immediately feel exhausted I was told I wasn't allowed to film because I wanted to film this video right after the therapy so it was just more genuine and like uh more so I could like process the therapy not like the part you know what I mean like talk about the therapy right after it and like how I felt that I wasn't allowed because she was just like that would take a lot of you you make filming say sound like it takes a lot of energy you don't have energy go rest and I did so yeah so I hope you guys enjoyed the video I don't know how much sense that made I hope I made it shorter than 18 minutes and that's my phone I'm sorry <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to do this in one cake, basically, but I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions about EMDR therapy, like, I don't want to go too specific into my trauma again, but, like, any general questions about the therapy, just comment them below, and I will do my best to answer. Of course, I've only been to one session so far, so don't know too much, and I will, again, make videos on future sessions, I think. Uh, probably not all of them. I don't know, but probably some of them. And yeah, so until next time, I was here. I'm still consistently queer. Hope this wasn't too medical or a video. Snazzy outro music. Snazzy outro music. Snazzy outro music. Please subscribe.